Okay, I, you know, we're always honest in this church, right? We're always really honest. Look, I had this bright idea for my sermon today. I had this bright idea that I was going to be like Pastor Jason. And I was going to have illustrations, and I was going to have, I was like, okay. But now I'm nervous. So I just want y'all to know I'm nervous. I hope this works out. Okay, I hope this works out. Hallelujah. Um, well, I am actually honored to stand here before you today and uh, praise God uh, that I am able to bring you an encouraging word. I hope it's encouraging to you today. Um, I uh, pray with the DMI pastors uh, on the first and third Fridays and uh, on the third Friday of uh, July, I came to the pastors with what I felt the Lord was saying because I felt they needed to be encouraged. And so um, then it was expressed to me that this is something that the body needs to hear. So as I speak to you today, I pray that you have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying and that what I speak to you today um, is just from my heart, which is from the Spirit. So I'm going to be up here talking, but the Spirit is, is, is going to be speaking to us. Amen? Hallelujah. And those of you that I have asked you to help, I'll give you the cues when it's time. <laughs> um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we heard a message uh, from Pastor Jason, and it was on issues. And um, it was a woman that had the issues of blood, and he talked about us having issues. So, It was clear from his sermon that we all have issues. We all have issues. Now, I have a question for us that heard that message. And if you didn't hear it, you can um, go to YouTube and hear it, or you could go back on Facebook, uh, the church's page, and you will be able to see it on Facebook. Um, but the questions I have is, do we press into Jesus? Have we been pressing into Jesus when these issues arise? It's just, these are just questions right now for you to think about. When these issues arise, do we go um, to our dwelling place, which is the most high? Do you even know that he is our dwelling place? Do we remember that God is our refuge? Do we remember that? Because when the pressure comes, we, we kind of forget some things. Do we recognize that God's faithfulness is our shield? Do we run to God as our fortress? And you may be thinking, I, I've heard of these things, but what are they? And I'm just going to tell you briefly what they are. And then, um, yeah, once I do that, we're going to have the illustration, okay? So we may be out of church before 11.15, I hope you don't put your hopes in that. <laughs> okay, my main scripture that I'm going to use is Psalms 91. And it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For, he, for it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper 
and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your feet and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. And you will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, they, that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion or cobra. The young lion and the serpent will not trample. The young lion and the serpent, you will trample down. Because he has loved me. And this is God talking now. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him high, securely on high, because he has known my name. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and I will let him see my salvation. When we look at this scripture, when we look at Psalms, 19, uh, Psalms 91, it almost sounds like, hey, I'm not going to have any problems in this life. I mean, I, all my enemies are going to drop at my feet. That's what it sounds like, you know. It, it's, it's, uh, the fowler is not going to be able to, to come near me, you know. Uh, pestilence isn't going to come into my house. That's what it sounds like. But I want to tell you, it's true. But it's a matter of how you look at it. Because the first verse tells us, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Those things are happening all around us. I mean, we know we have issues. We, we learned that, didn't we? That we have issues. But just like that woman with the issue of blood that had pressed her way into Jesus, there is a place that we can go when these things come about that we will be able to have the peace of God. Hallelujah. I want, I want to make it clear to us today that we are going to have troubles, we are going to have trials, we're going to have tribulations. But as Jesus told the disciples, these things in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But know this, I have overcome the world. In the world, we're going to have tribulations, but we can have peace when we are in him. Amen? And um, James 1, 2, and 3, and I have to tell you, when I was going through uh, some things in my life that I just thought were just so detrimental, I was just like, God, where are you? What are you doing? You know, I'm, actually, I... It was early in my Christian life, and I thought, you know, this is supposed to be a rose garden. But I, I forgot about the thorns. The roses are beautiful, but I forgot about the thorns. And, and James 1, 2, and 3, God says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. I was like, oh, so I am going to have problems. I am going to have 
trials. I am going to have all these different things that are going to come at me. And it was like, yeah, you are. And it doesn't matter how old you are in Christ. It doesn't matter how old you are in Christ. But we have this confidence in the Lord that when we face these things, when we face these issues, we have this confidence in him that he is our dwelling place. We have this confidence in him that he is our refuge. Hallelujah. That he is a shield, that he is our fortress when these things come at us. So let me tell you what a dwelling place is. Um, the Hebrew word that I am using, and I, I have to tell you, I've been uh, doing a daily devotional that gives you the names of God and all of the, the names that she gives or the titles that she gives. She calls them names, but not all of them are names. Some of them are titles. But when I came to uh, this, this week that I had had this devotional, it just spoke to my heart because it was like these names that are given here as God as a dwelling place, as him as a refuge, a shield, a fortress, a strong tower. Usually they run together in the Psalms. You will see that there's, uh, there was more than one that is mentioned at a time. Um, just like here in Psalms 91, uh, in verse 4, where it says, says that his faithfulness is a shield and buckler or a, a shield and a, a, a stronghold or a fortress for us. So they run together. And so I'm going to give you what these things are. And then I'm going to get to the main, actually the main point I have of this message. But a dwelling place in the Hebrew is a it's a habitation. It's a dwelling. It's a place where you live. And we sang this morning about God being a dwelling place and um, come and dwell in us. Well, I want you to know that when Jesus died on the cross and he rose again, it was so that the Holy Spirit could dwell in us. And he dwells in us. And God, that has always been God's desire. When we look in Genesis um, chapter 3, when we look in Genesis chapter 3, it has where um, it says that Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord moving through the garden. And this is after they had sinned and they hid from his presence. And there are other indications in Genesis, from Genesis 1 and 2 and 3, that God's presence was always with them. They actually had fellowship with him. And I believe that Adam and Eve saw God. But because of sin, it separated us. So we don't have that opportunity to see him and live. But we have, we have the opportunity to be in his presence, to dwell with him. And so it's like, how, um, how do we do that? We do it as we were doing this morning through getting in that, that mindset with, through praise and worship. It's through prayer. It's through being in the word. It's through sitting before him. It's not always in us talk, talk, talking, but sometimes it's in us listening. But what are you listening to? Now, I say that because if you are not in the word, you could be hearing something and it may not be God. Because you haven't learned to hear his voice. How do we learn to hear his voice? We learn to hear his voice by being in the word of God. That's how we learn to hear his voice. By being in his word so that we can know what he sounds like. 
Hallelujah. So as we are in his word, as we are spending time in prayer, as we are um, not just talking to him, but we are also listening, then we, are, we can learn. We can learn how to hear his voice. Um, I've been listening. <laughs> I've been listening to the book of John, and I just started chapter one, and I listened through, and I, I know I must listen to the book of John at least. I listen to it at least a couple times a day because when I'm doing things around the house that are like mindless, that I don't have to think about and I can listen, like when you're washing dishes or folding clothes where you would might have had the TV on or whatever, now I have the word on, okay? So, but I'm listening to the book of John and Jesus um, is talking in John... Uh, chapter 5, I believe it is, is after he has healed the um, paralytic that had been sitting by the pool of Bethesda and the Pharisees and the the religious leaders are upset with him saying, you're healing on the Sabbath. And he said, I only do what I hear my father say do. And I, that just kind of jumped out at me as I was listening to it one day. It's like, I only hear what my father says to do. And you think I did something now, he's going to show me some greater things to do than this. And I hear him and I do what he says. So in my, in my heart of hearts, I said, God, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to do what I hear you say do. And how do you know if he's telling you to do something, if you're not in his word and you don't know what his voice sounds like? You know, I, I, um, I had planned on going to uh, my family reunion. It happens every two years and every other two years. It goes back to where I'm originally from, which is where most of my relatives are, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Well, this year, guess where the family reunion was? After not having it for four years because of COVID and so forth, it's in Chattanooga, and I want to go. I am like, I, my kids will tell you, I'm like, okay, guys, we need to go to family reunion. They're like, Mom, we, you, mm. <laughs> Mom, these relatives are so distant. They're not even relatives. I was like, yes, they are, because I know where they came from. You know, anyway, but I'm like, I want to go to this reunion, and I wasn't really feeling peace. And this is after I had been praying, God, I only want to do what you want me to do. I was like, okay. I even got somebody to go with me because my kids weren't going to go with me. So I asked them, I said, will you go with me? And not only did they say yes, I said, will you drive? They were like, yeah. I was like, okay, yes. You know, so I, I send the money in to pay for the reunion and I still, I was like, I really didn't have peace, but I was like, I'll get over this. It'll be okay. You know, I, I was packing. We were supposed to leave like that Wednesday, and I was packing on that Monday, and it was like, I did not have peace. So I had to send a message to my cousins to tell them, I'm not coming. I'm, I'm not coming. I, I didn't have peace. And I believe that God was... God was speaking to me in that way of me it not being something that I was settled with, that I couldn't do just and be like, I wanted to go. It's, I wanted to. More than anything, I haven't seen these people for the longest time. But it was like, no. So I was like, well, I just gave away that money. That's what I'm thinking. I just gave away that money because it's like four days before the reunion is supposed to start. I know I'm not getting a refund. Not that they said that you would or wouldn't. But anyway, um, sent them a message, told them I wouldn't. And why a week later I got a refund? I was just like, oh, okay, that was pretty good, you know. I was like, God, yes. <laughs> um, you know, but I had peace. How often do we do things that we haven't really heard, heard from God on it? 
And we, we regret because we didn't really pray or seek him or, or go, go into his presence to find out, is this something I need to do? I know it's only happened to me. It hasn't happened to anybody else. I know that. So, but we have God as our dwelling place, and we go into this place. It's, it's also called a secret place uh, that we can, we can go into um, with him. And when we go into this place, we find that he is a refuge for us. A refuge means um, just that it's a refuge, it's a shelter. It's a, it's, it's a picture of God being who we can run to for safety and security. Now, in um, the Old Testament days, they had cities of refuge. And these cities were set up that they were no more than a day's journey for anyone within the country for them to go there if they had committed a murder and they had killed someone accidentally. So they could go to this city and they could stay there so that the avenger, meaning the if they kill my brother, I'm the avenger. I'm going to go after them because they killed my brother. But I can't go after them as long as they are in this city of refuge because it's a place of safety for them. And so the word is showing us this is who God is for us. He is that refuge. But you don't know him that as that if you haven't been through anything, really. If you're not running from anything, really. Right? Um, when we... Uh, In Psalm 18, which is actually almost exactly 2 Samuel 33. Um, yeah, let me see it. Yeah, I think it's 2 Samuel 22, not 33. 2 Samuel 22. It's David, and it says here, For the choir director, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord released him from the hand of the enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I love you, Lord, verse 1, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge. That place of safety. Y'all know David was running for his life for a long time. He was running, from his li running for his life for a long time, but he saw God as who he was because he sought after God. Oh, I love um, 1 Samuel 30 where it talks about they had come out of Ziglag and David and the men, they were crying and weeping. But it says that after he had cried all that he could cry and his men turned on him and said, okay, we, we are about to kill you. David encouraged himself in the Lord. David had to go into that secret place to encourage himself in the Lord. He was like, he had to go in that place so that he could take refuge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then um, another term that is used is shield. Now, a shield is a... a um, is, is a, 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 a piece of metal, this is, uh, or some other suitable material that is held with straps that is a uh, protection. Now, I think I'm going to do the shield part now because this has special effects. <sighs> okay, so um, Dawn, would you come and get my shield sign? It's behind, it's no, it's the one, the last one, because, no, not that one. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Dawn. It's over there. It's big. It's big. <laughs> it's big. And actually, it's bigger than my other size because, and, and Dawn, if you could come up here, um, because a shield, if the, the shield was held and it protected um, no, it didn't go over your face because you had to see. Uh, <laughs> but it protected your vital parts. It, it protected the vital parts. Because you never knew. It, it was for close combat. 
but you didn't always know where where the arrows would be coming from or the rocks or but you had the shield so you never knew but God is our shield don't move Dawn <laughs> face forward Dawn oops that's okay but you have things that are going after you. Ooh, you see that? But you have your shield that protects you. This is, God is our shield. When those darts of life, and you don't know where they're coming from. You don't know where they're coming from. Sometimes they'll miss you. Sometimes they'll go over your head. But they're always aiming for the vital part. They're always aiming for the vital part. So you could take your shield back to your seat. <laughs> so that is the shield. Could you give me the fortress one? And then he's our fortress. Now, I thought that this was, uh, this was interesting. I, this one doesn't have anything to hold it up because... It says that God is our fortress. Now, the fortress, and I'm, I'm sorry to those of you that are online, you can't see this, but the fortress was a, uh, the fortress was walls that surrounded a city. And I looked up how the, what, what, what did a fortress look like? Usually, a fortress was at least two stories tall. But I think the thing about the fortress that was most interesting to me was that the fortress would be like eight feet deep. So it could be, actually, it could be 60 feet tall, which I have no idea how tall that is, but I know it's not 60 feet. But it's a good example for you to see how, how big it is, like, compared to a person. And you could go behind the fortress. You'd be in your fortress, and you would be protected. And, and the fortress was, like, impenetrable. Did I say that word right? Thank you. Impenetrable. Yes. And that's what God is for us. He is a fortress. He is our fortress. He is our fortress. Uh, I, I read Psalms 18, but when he says, my shield, the horn of my salvation and my stronghold, stronghold and fortress equal. So that's who God is. He's our, the presence. We need to dwell in his presence. Hallelujah. Jeremy, could you come now? I want you to grab the... No, he's going to grab the sheet. He's big. <laughs> and if you would come up here on the stage... He is going to be a representation of a dwelling place. Go all the way up. Mm -hmm. He's going to be a representation of the dwelling place as God is our dwelling place. So us going into that place. Yeah. Wingspan out. 
No, I'm sorry. I, we should have had stage practice first, huh? <laughs> when you have props, you need to practice, right? Okay, we have God as our dwelling place, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. Uh, Anthony, dwelling place. God is our dwelling place. <laughs> and we go into that place. But we go into that place, and as we are there, we recognize that he is our refuge Pastor Jason, if you would come up. Actually, I'm going to let Pastor Jason do it. Steve, thank you. Yeah, hold it so people can see God is my refuge. And I'm, I, I have the representation of God being bigger. I really wish I had a little kid because that shows us how small we are. It, it could be a symbol of how small we are compared to who God is. But as we're in that dwelling place, we see that God is our refuge, but we find it in the dwelling place. Hallelujah. You're not too tall. You could stand up straight. Hallelujah. He's our fortress. I don't have someone to bring that sign over, but keeping in mind that he is that strong tower. He is that big place. And then God is our shield. You could bring the shield. Yeah. Uh huh. All the way up. And I'm having them do this in this way because we find him as these things as we are in his dwelling place. We're not going to find them outside of this place. Us being in the hiding place, hiding in him, that's where we're going to find our help. That's where we're going to find our shield. That's where we're going to find our refuge, that place of safety to keep us from our enemies. It's, it's in that place that we're going to find him as our fortress. A strong tower that's impenetrable. That's where we're going to find him. Hallelujah. Thank you all. But this is what brings me actually to my main, it brings me to my main point of this, is that with that, we can rest in him. When we know that God is my dwelling place, when I know, when we know, when you know that God is your refuge, when you know that God is your shelter, when you know that God is your fortress or your strong tower, you can put your trust in him. No matter what is going on in your life, you can put your trust in him. And then we can rest in him in the assurance that no matter what comes, we don't have to fear because God is with us. Hallelujah. 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 Now, um, in Psalms 62, verse 5 through 7, my soul, and this is a psalmist that is really, he's talking to himself. He said, my soul, wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from him. 
He only is my rock and salvation, my stronghold. I will not be shaken. Now, I, what I should have also done is brought the lawn chair. I should have brought the lawn chair so I could show you how it's like just rest in him. Rest in him. Sit back. Relax. All these things are going on around us, but we can rest in him. We can rest in him because he is our fortress. Psalm 62, 1, 1 and 2, it says, My soul waits in silence for God only. From him is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. Hallelujah. Because God is our refuge, because he is our fortress, our, our dwelling place, we can rest in him. I hope that this encourages you. Because life is not easy. And it's not going to get any easier. So we, we want to be able to stand. And having done all to stand, that we can stand firm. Because we have assurance in a firm foundation. The almighty God. He is the rock of our salvation. What had inspired me to talk to the pastors um, that week about this is because as pastors, they go through, pastors go through a lot. They carry the burden of every person that is within the congregation. If you talk to them or not, if you lay that burden on them or you don't, they still carry the burden because they know that people go through. They know that people have issues. Some people's issues are greater than other people's. But they're carrying this weight. And so I, I felt like I needed to remind them that you... You have God as your refuge and your fortress, and you can rest in him. And as a pastor, you have to tell yourself, God, I'm laying this down before you. As you go in, as a pastor goes into his presence, I'm laying this down before you, Lord. But the same thing goes for all of us. It goes for all of us. Who in here, there may be some pe people in here that have no problems, but if you're in here and there is everything is peachy cream, you have a rose garden without thorns on the bush. Any, is there anybody in here like that? Is there anybody? Is there anybody in here that is like, you know, things are great? Because even if you have all the money you need, there's something else that's happening. Your kid's acting crazy. The people on your job is acting crazy. But we have this assurance. I believe that Psalms 91 is our assurance. That no matter what happens, God is always with us. God is always with us. When we are dwelling in the shelter of the Most High. We will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. 
And we can say without a shadow of a doubt, my refuge, my fortress, my God whom I trust. That's who he is, and that's why you can rest in him, because you trust him. That's why you can rest in him, because you trust him. Um, there's a song by Mercy Me that uh, I didn't even know the song until someone that was dear to my heart was um, in the process of of actually dying of cancer and really like suffering in the the depths of it all. But um, this song, it. Um, I, I don't have the words exactly, but it was saying, no, there are, you know, when things are going good, we're great, but, you know, things don't look good right now. Things aren't looking good right now in my life. But I'm going to trust you anyway, God. Even though things aren't looking good, I'm going to trust you. And I'm telling you, that's how the person lived their life. For I had never seen someone that was that strong. But their assurance was, it's like, God, I know you're able. I know you can. Saved by the power of your mighty hand. But even if you don't. My hopes in you alone. Can we say that? And the only reason that she could say it is because she knew him. Because she had spent time in the secret place. It's like, God, I know you're able. I know you can do it. But even if you don't. My hope is still in you. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. That's what a person that dwells in the presence of the Most High can say in the midst of death. In the midst of wanting to be, he wanting to be healed. But understanding, God, even if you don't, my hope is still in you because I know you're able and I know you can. No matter what you are going through right now, know that God is able. But even if he doesn't, continue to have your hope in the one that cares for you more than you care for yourself. He has a plan. And he will be glorified in that plan. Hallelujah. There may be someone here today that does not know God in that way. You, you don't know God as a secret place. You don't know him as, as that dwelling place. You don't know him as a refuge or fortress. You don't know him as a protector because you have never asked him into your life. So I want to give you that opportunity today that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, as we did communion today, saying that he died for us, that we could have life. If you don't know him in that way, if you have never said, God, forgive me for my sins, Jesus, come into my life, I want to give you that opportunity right now. Is there anyone here that does not know him as Lord and Savior?
So I want to pray for the rest of us. I want to pray for the rest of us according, uh, according to the scriptures that we have gone over. Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that each person that is here, that is under the sound of my voice, those that are watching online, Lord, if there was someone that uh, said that they did not know you and they want to know you, I pray, I pray for them, Father. I pray for them to come into the knowledge of who you are as their son, that they will ask you to forgive them for their sins and to receive Christ into their life. And even if you're online, you, you don't have to have someone there with you. It's repenting of your sins and asking the Lord to come into your life. That, that's, it's that simple. But after that, you need to connect with someone that, that knows him, someone that can help you to walk the, the journey, to walk the walk. So you can contact the church. But for those of you that know him, I just pray that you will seek him in even a deeper way to be that dwelling place, that you will abide in him, that you will live in his presence. That you will recognize that he is your fortress. You will recognize that you can trust him above all else. that you will wait for him. You will wait for him. You will wait for God only. You will hope in him. For he alone is your rock and salvation. He alone is your stronghold. It is only in him that you will not be shaken. It is only in him that you will not be shaken. I pray, Lord God, that we will dwell in your shelter. We will abide under your wings, O oh God. God, that we will make you our refuge and our fortress. Lord, that we will acknowledge and recognize that our trust can only be in you, that you will deliver us, O oh God. You will deliver us. What that deliverance looks like, we don't know. But we know that you will deliver and that you will be glorified within our lives in the name of Jesus. And why? Why will you do it? As you said in Psalms 91, you will do it because we have loved you. You will deliver us because we have loved you. You will do it because we call upon your name and you do answer. You will hear us in our times of trouble and you will rescue us. For you alone are our salvation, oh God. You alone are our salvation. Father, I pray that we, your people, will learn how to rest in you instead of in our worries, instead of in our problems. God, we will quiet our souls. And we will be, as, as the psalmist said, soul, be quiet before the Lord. Trust in my God. And that is sometimes what we have to do. We have to talk to our souls and tell our souls what to do. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that our trust will be in you no matter what our finances look like. 
no matter how our children are acting, no matter if our spouse is saved or, or not saved, Lord, no matter how the people on my job treat me, I will put my hope in you. God, no matter how much doubt tries to come, I will trust in you. No matter how fear tries to overtake me, I will trust in you. God, no matter how anxiety and worry try to grab hold of me, I will trust in you. God, I will trust you for the salvation of, of my family. I will trust you. Because I know that you are my refuge, my strength, my strong tower, my fortress, my deliverer. And I know that is it that it is in the secret place is where I will find the peace that my soul desires. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.